Welcome everyone. In today's lesson, we will learn about the production possibility frontier and the concept of opportunity cost. Remember that in the previous lesson, you learned that everyone faces the economic problem, including individuals, businesses, and governments. Let us categorically look at this economic problem from a country's perspective. A country decides on what goods to produce for her citizenry in the face of scarcity. So this brings into the concept of production possibilities frontier. What is it? Production possibilities frontier is the maximum combination of two commodities that a country can produce using its available resources and technology at any given time period. From this definition, you should take notice of two key phrases, maximum combination of two commodities and available resources and technology. These phrases basically underlie the assumptions of the production possibility frontier. These are the assumptions. The first one is that only two goods are produced in that country. The second is resources and technology is considered to be fixed. And the third one is that resources are fully employed. Let us look at a typical hypothetical data of production alternatives or production possibilities of a country. A country produces only two commodities, cocoa and maize, measured in bags. The first column represents the production possibilities or alternatives of the country ranging from A to E. The other two columns are the quantity of both commodities produced at each alternative. At production alternative A, the country produces no cocoa but 10 bags of wheat by employing all its available resources and giving technology. At alternative B, the country produces one bag of cocoa and nine bags of wheat. The question is, what is the opportunity cost of producing one bag of cocoa in this case? When the country initially dedicated all its resources and technology into producing at alternative A, this country produced 10 bags of wheat. So by producing at B, one bag of wheat had to be sacrificed in order to make B possible because it produces nine instead of 10. Thus, the opportunity cost of producing one bag of cocoa is that one bag of wheat which was sacrificed to achieve that production target. Similarly, at C, the country is able to produce two bags of cocoa and seven bags of wheat. Comparing this to alternative A, where 10 bags of wheat was produced, the country is seen to have sacrificed three bags of wheat to be able to produce at C. So the opportunity cost of producing two bags of cocoa is the three bags of wheat that were sacrificed. At production alternative D, if you compare it to A, you can see that by producing three bags of cocoa, the country is only able to produce four bags of wheat. In that case, six bags of wheat have been sacrificed to be able to achieve that production target. Thus, it is proper to say that the opportunity cost of producing three bags of cocoa is six bags of wheat which have been sacrificed. At production alternative E, the country is able to produce four bags of cocoa. Comparing that to wheat, you can see that all 10 bags of wheat have been sacrificed. So the opportunity cost of producing at production alternative E, where the country produces four bags of cocoa, is all 10 bags of wheat which have been sacrificed to achieve that production target. You can take it from the other way around. If the country dedicates all its resources and technology into producing cocoa, that country is able to produce four bags of cocoa and no wheat. If the country decides to produce at alternative C, where the bags of wheat are seven, the country is only able to produce two bags of cocoa. Comparing it to alternative E, where the country originally produces four bags, at C, the country sacrifices two bags of cocoa to achieve that production target. Now, from this hypothetical data, a curve can be generated known as the production possibilities curve. So this is the production possibilities curve for the data. You can clearly see from the diagram that the production alternatives A to E are labeled and lie on the curve. These points reflect the maximum combinations of cocoa and maize that a country can produce using its available resources and technology. So we refer to these points as optimum output. Any point that lies below the curve will show that the resources and technology can produce such outputs. 
only that the resources are underutilized. So, for example, this point is labeled as attainable but inefficient output. Also, if a point lies above the curve, then this means that the resources and technology are not enough. They are not sufficient enough to produce that output. So, this point shows an unattainable output. So, hypothetically, the production possibilities curve is simply concave to the origin, and that represents an increasing opportunity cost. There may yet be some exceptional cases where the curve can be convex to the origin, or even a straight line, but we will limit the curve to its concave nature, the most common form of the production possibilities curve. The diagram shown on the screen depicts a situation where producing more of good B tends to sacrifice more of good A and the other way around as well. This shows that as more outputs of good B is produced, the opportunity cost, that is how much of good A must be sacrificed, also increases. Thus, it is proper to say that the concave nature of the production possibilities curve shows increasing opportunity cost or trade-offs between the goods. Now, the production possibilities curve can shift to the right or left. So there are basically two main types of shift, an outward shift and an inward shift. An outward shift shows that the economy is growing or expanding because in such a situation, more of goods A and B can be produced. And this could come about through the improvement in technology or the discovery of new resources. An inward shift represents that the country is contracting or showing decline in growth since less of both goods A and B are produced and it could also come as a result of obsolete or old-fashioned technology or possibly a depletion in the resources. So at this point, I hope you understand how a country makes decisions on its production possibilities when confronted with economic problem, which is scarcity. In the next lesson, you will learn about economic resources. See you in the next lesson.